Hey everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore. Welcome to my channel. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I post on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Today is Treat Box Day and I am sharing this little candy cane treat box. This is used in the Stampin' Up! Um, sweet Candy Cane Bundle. It is still available. The bundle is still available. The paper is on low inventory, so if you want the paper, grab it right away because it's going to go quick. It, it's very popular. The suite is on back order. So you can get all the products for this tutorial um, on my blog. You can shop right on my blog at stampingwithamore.com. You can check there also for the October host code because I'm filming this before October 1st. So um, you can check there for my new host code and use the host code and I'll put you in a drawing at the end of the month for free hostess dollars. All right, so if you are new to this channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, comment below. And also, if you would like to please, please share because it helps get my video out. I'm heading for a goal. I want to hit 50,000 by the end of the year. I've talked about this before. But um, I'm really, really wanting to, to, to do this. And if you can help me get there, I would really appreciate it. So thanks so much for all of you who have been sharing. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, so this is the treat holder. I made one similar to, similar to this, I think a couple years ago. And I, it was a 4th of July one. I'm not sure what the width was of it. I wanted this one taller because of the candy canes. So I made it taller. And I think the other one's smaller. I'll try to find it and I'll link it in the description below. And you can check that one out. I didn't put a ribbon on the other one. It was just using Velcro. But I really love this ribbon and I thought it went really well with this. So I added the ribbon on here. Now, I would have never put these colors together. This is Sweet Sorbet and Real Red. But Stampin' Up! did it, and I really like it, and so I used it, and I went with it, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So this is how it opens. I'm going to just untie it here, and it just opens. It has like a little slant opening here. I just put these candy canes in it just to show you. You can put any candy in here, but I just put those in there because that's what I had. Um, and so it just closes back up like this. If you just want to put Velcro on it and leave the ribbon off, you can stick a Velcro dot here and then it'll just come off with the Velcro. So that is what I'm sharing today. I'm going to go ahead and tie this. This really ties nicely. It's so pretty with the little ruffled edge on it. I love this ribbon. All right, so there you have it. I'm also adding a little bit of detail on this, and it is these little frosted um, branches. Oh my gosh, this really, really dresses it up, y'all. I am using our Snowfall um, Accent Puff Paint. Do you remember Puff Paint? I've used this on another video, but um, you just put it on the cardstock, and I added glitter to it, which I'm going to show you how I did all that during this video. So this is what I'm sharing. So I'm going to tell you the size of this because it is, it's four and three quarters by three inches um, wide. And then it's one inch tall here, the sides of one inch. But it's a good size. You can fit lots of candy in it. This is something you want to make for that special someone. They'd be really, it'd be really cute um, for friends and family. All right, let's get started with this. So what you're going to need for this is the Sweet Candy Canes bundle. So that's the stamp set and the candy cane dies that go with it. Like I said, this bundle, when I checked last, it was still available. And the designer series paper was on low inventory. So go check that out if that's what you if you want to use it. These are the dies I'm actually using, and this one is from the Forever Flourishing dies, all these leaves. I love this one. It's one of my favorite, and I'm using this one right here, and that's going to be for that little glittered accent we're going to add to it. It really, really makes a difference in this box. I really love the accent that it shows on here. All right, so the paper that you're going to need 
is I'm using the sweet sorbet, like I said. This is the top piece, and it's four and three quarters by 11. And I am using real red for the box part. It's five by six. You need um, to mat it, and you're gonna need two pieces. That one piece that's two and three quarters by four and a half, and one that's two and a half by four and a half. All this will be in the inspiration sheet on my blog at stampingwithamore.com. You'll also need a piece of basic white. I'm using the thick for this, like I do on all my boxes and stuff. And we're going to go ahead and stamp first. Get everything ready to go, and then we'll make our box. All right, so first thing that we're going to stamp are our candy canes. And I'm using the sweet sorbet for this. And let me do it this way because this is big and I want to make sure it's totally covered. And so we're going to do two candy canes. And these go in the opposite direction. So that one and then we're going to do the other one. This is such a pretty bundle. I love this bundle. The candy canes are so pretty. And you can go the shortcut route. If you just want to use the designer series paper, you can cut those out as well um, with your dies. And then I'm going to use the soft succulent and we're going to do some leaves. I did three on, on it. So I'm going to just do three here. And then... I want to do the sentiment as well because I want to run these all through at the same time. So I'll put the sentiment up here and I'll leave a space for the, the leaf die that we're going to use. So I'm going to do that one here. Candy cane wishes and mistletoe kisses. These are all from the same bundle. And then this die, it came from the stylish shapes. It's stitched, that's why I like it. You can use any circle punch or any circle die that you have. And then we're gonna cut out these leaves with these. And then these are the candy cane. And I'm gonna use my mint tape for all of this and then I have room for that. So I'm just going to use some mint tape for all of it, these to hold these down. All right, I'm going to take that to the cut and emboss, and we are going to run these all through, and then I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so we have all our pieces. This is the leaf that we're using on there. These are the two candy canes and the three little leaves, and then our sentiment right here. All right, so let's go ahead with this one. I'm gonna show you how I got the little snow effect with my, I'm using Dazzling Diamonds. We don't have that anymore. You can use any glitter that you have. But what I'm gonna do is you need to shake this up really good, this Snowfall X, this puff paint. And you are gonna to need to heat, heat it with your heating tool so it puffs up. But it's so worth it, y'all. It's so pretty. And so I'm going to use my little one. I'm going to put it on here because that seems to get a little bit weak. <laughs> so, oops. Oh, you got to be careful with this. It comes out really fast. But you, you can spread it around if you get too much on there. Just go all over all your leaves. Okay, so I have it on all my leaves now. I hope, I hope you can see this. And then I'm going to take my Dazzling Diamonds here. Y'all, I bought an extra one of those when I knew that it was going to get discontinued because this is such pretty glitter. And I'm just sprinkling it on the wet um, snow effects puffy paint. All right, so I'm going to grab my heat tool. And then we're going to heat this. It's, I hope you're going to be able to see the effect it gives it. All 
Okay, y'all, I hope you can see this, but um, it's so pretty, and especially on this white cardstock. As soon as you see it puff up, take the heat off of that area because you can burn it. So I'm just FYI. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to clean this off with my little Swiffer because there's glitter now all over. And then what we're going to do here is set this aside and we're going to put our box together and then I'll show you how I put all this on there. So we are going to score this piece first. This is the top of the box. We're going to score this on the 11 inch side at 3, 4 and 1 eighth, 7 and an eighth, and eight and a quarter. And then we are going to score this piece and it is going to, we're going to score this on the six inch side at one and five. And you're going to turn it and you're going to score it at one and four. I love how this bone folder, y'all, I know some of you had said you got, you have one of those. Aren't they the nicest? I love how it glides over the paper. All right, so on this bottom piece, you are going to cut this up here. I'm going to cut a tiny bit off of here because I don't want it to overhang the top. And then we're going to do this one too. all like that. Let's get that out of the way and we're going to sharpen all these score marks and then we're going to do the top one too. The top piece. Just like that. All right, so on this bottom one, I'm going to use Stampin' Seal Plus. This is the plus because you don't want to use regular Stampin' Seal on your boxes. Not when you're putting them together. Oops, I ran out of that one. This one's a new one. So I'm going to do all your glue tabs the same way. I'm going to scoot that out of the way here. Let me get this in the... And then you're just going to pull these all up. Line up your corners. And that is the bottom part of your box. Now, we're not going to glue it in here yet because we need to mat these pieces. So this larger piece, I'm opening it this way. You can open it any way that you want. You can flip it this way and it can open to the left. But I'm doing it to the right. I'm right-handed, so I think that's why <laughs> it makes sense to me. And I'm just going to use some regular stamp and seal, and we are going to mat these pieces. So the wider piece goes on this front part because this is the wider part right here. And then on this other side is the narrower one, and we're going to put on there. You can use any patterns on this paper. This paper is so pretty. I love it. All right, so now what we're going to do here is I'm going to get my trimmer. And you want to measure about on here, maybe an eighth of an inch. You can measure it and mark it like I'll show you here since I didn't I just eyeballed it but you just want to mark it like an eighth of an inch from your score mark. So I'm just gonna mark it like right here and then you're just gonna cut from that mark to the corner. So line it up on your trimmer where that mark is and the point here. 
And you're just gonna, and that's how you get your slanted piece. Just like that. So it folds in like this. Don't You don't wanna go from corner to corner because then you're gonna be able to see this edge here and it just doesn't look as nice. So now we can attach our inside piece. This is really important when you when you do this part. I'm just putting um, Stampin' Seal Plus on the bottom here. You can use wet glue. I think I used wet glue on my other one, but just to make it a little quicker here. You wanna make sure it's right up to your score mark on both of these sides here. So I wanna make sure that it's right in that center. So you have to look on both sides and make sure it's even at the top and bottom too, like this part. And there we go. So you might wanna use wet glue. It's a lot easier. And then this should all fold together like that. I'm gonna grab my ribbon, and this is the ribbon that I'm using. It's the mini ruffled ribbon, it's in real red. And I'm gonna tie this around. And I'll show you what I did. I put a little glue dot under the ribbon to hold it in place. But I'm gonna just tie the bow first. And like I said, you could just put a Velcro dot there if you want. And, and that's it, you don't have to use the ribbon. But I just put a little glue dot underneath to hold that ribbon right here. Let me grab my paper piercer here and just hold it right there so it stays in the center of this. Grab my ribbon scissors and we'll trim this. All right, so there we go. And it keeps that ribbon right in place. You can even put glue dots around the back side and you know, however you want so it stays on there or you can even use your regular stamp and seal and hold it down, but I thought this was sufficient enough. All right, let's grab all our pieces here and we're gonna make our little piece for our front. So I'm gonna use some, I think I'm gonna use glue on this, y'all, because this way I can move it around. So we wanna put these like in a crisscross pattern. So I'm gonna just, let's add the glue there. And then all our little pieces, my leaves and stuff, I just kind of put like behind. And you gotta be careful because you are using wet glue and you know these will move around. And then we're gonna take these pieces and I'm going to cut these down. I'm using this center one here. I'm gonna put this one down at the bottom here. So we're gonna, again, put some wet glue on here. Just gonna attach that to the bottom. You want to see this for sure. It's so pretty and so glittery. And then I took two pieces here. I took these, this one here. You have to cut these apart. And then I took this one on this side. You can put it all on there, but I only use these two pieces. And then these two pieces I put in the kind of like on this opposite side here. So be careful you're not sticking everything to your mat. I just like doing it better off of the project and getting this all the way that I want it first. And just hold your finger back there just till it, that glue adheres. All right, 
right so then we're going to be ready to put it on here i'm going to again and when you put this on here i'm using dimensionals and you're only going to attach it to this slanted piece right here so just get all your dimensionals that you're going to use and you want to make sure it's in the center and then just put your dimensionals on that one side I may need one more on the bottom. Grab one more here. And then it's starting to fall off because it's not dry enough. And then just set it in the center. And then, then press those pieces down there. So when you open it, this is all going to come out to the right. And then I'm going to just use some wet glue and we're going to put this right in the center, the sentiment. Just like that. And there you have it, y'all. It's all done. Isn't that cute? I think these are so cute. I mean, it's going to be really, really um, cute to fill with candies and give to that special someone that you want to make something to your grandkids, your kids. It'd be really cute. Even as a stocking stuffer, it would be really cute. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need any supplies, you can get them right on my blog at stampingwithamore.com. You can grab the inspiration sheet there. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed day, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, everyone. Bye.